Well, guess what, delegates? We've reached the end. It's been such a pleasure and a privilege to spend the day with you. Um, thank you for entrusting me to be your Master of Ceremonies today. I hope, um, like me, that you have taken away really important messages around the value and importance of inclusion for everybody and the importance of having perhaps difficult and different conversations to really spark our continued energy and creativity towards better more innovative, more creative solutions to benefit not only people with disability, but every person in our society, in our community, both locally, nationally, and indeed internationally. Having been part of this conference today and hearing all the presentations, I'm overwhelmed with the work that is happening here in Victoria around the investment in inclusion. As somebody who travels around speaking nationally and internationally, and I talk about the importance of investing in inclusion. This morning when we heard from Gabrielle Williams talk about the Andrews Labor government's investment in inclusion, there is certainly significant work happening in the space. And I'm so very pleased to see that the conversation around disability is one that is at the centre of much of what we do, and that has been a long time coming, and that is thanks to every individual in this room. I want to end today by giving you a brief summary of, of some of the key takeaway points for me, but I first of all want to start by acknowledging and thanking you, who every day are working to improve the opportunity and inclusion of people with disability. What you do each and every day is important, full stop. What you do every day matters. I stand here on the back of many advocates and fearless people in our community that have come well before me. And I have a voice and I have an opinion and I'm not going to shut up because they've given me that agency and I respect that. We heard very clearly from Professor Anne Kavanagh around the importance of data. We cannot stand idly by and watch data around our community disappear. Data is essential in framing the conversations with government, essential with framing the conversations with the broader community around what are the issues now, into the future, and indeed the new and emerging issues that may arise for members of our community, and how do we indeed respond? And it's my firm belief that we cannot do that without reliable, stable, strong, and long-term data. We heard from Professor David Haywood from our sponsor, Future Social Services Institute, around the changing nature of our workforce and the need over time for an extra quarter of a million workers across our nation. We are at the forefront of significant change with the introduction and now full implementation of the National Disability Insurance Scheme, but our work does not stop there. Just as our work for the LGBTIQ community does not stop with the passage of marriage equality legislation, our work today and every day going forward is to hold government to account, hold community to account, but also ask ourselves, what are the difficult conversations that we need to keep having to ensure that we improve opportunity for people with disability? I was also uh, moved by the stories of Bryce and the panel um, earlier this afternoon around our experiences of education, the parental experience, and also the employer experience. These are conversations that I think we need to continue to have, and they are reminders of the reasons why we are here. They are reminders of the reasons why we do what we do, and indeed, they are reminders that in fact, whilst we have achieved significant results, we all 
have much work to do. Investing in inclusion is not just a government responsibility. It is not just the responsibility of our elected leaders. It's the responsibility of everyone. Because, and I'm sure you all know, the one and only minority group that each and every one of us could join tomorrow through a set of circumstances completely beyond your control is that of being labelled a person with disability. Delegates, as you go out into the world and continue the great work that you do, I would ask you to reflect on that and ask you to think about, now, if I were a person with disability, and indeed there are several people with disability in the audience today, for those of you who do not identify as a person with disability, I would ask you to reflect and ask yourself, how would you expect to be treated in your community if you lived each and every day with that label? I reflect on the um, discussion that we've just had around the images of people with disability and our representations in media. And although I can safely report that I'm auditioning for The Block, um, and I've put a call out to be on The Bachelor and Bachelorette, I'm covering all of my reality TV bases, I think it's an important conversation to have. Where are the representations of all people with disability? Where are the representations of us in mainstream media? Often when I speak to people about the work that I do, particularly in the employment space, and I go into boardrooms as a senior leader in the disability employment services sector, and quite often the most common question I get is, Wayne, what exactly is your disability? We didn't see it. And I think to myself, that's precisely the point. Disability is as diverse and as rich as we are individuals. And although we may not see it, it is there and it is part of the essential fabric and strength of our community. I give my deepest thanks to each and every one of you for the work that you do. Because without you, we would not be here today. Each and every speaker today has given of themselves voluntarily to share with you their insights and perspectives. And it is only through those types of discussions that we begin to grow, that we develop, that we change, that we evolve, and that we acknowledge what we're doing right and where indeed we need to improve. Professor Kavanagh's presentation on stats was a stark reminder for me about that, about just how perhaps the experience of people with disability has not moved as far as we would like it. And indeed, I'd like to see eventually Professor Kavanagh do a speech that says we've got 0% of people with disability that experience bullying. We've improved the health, well-being and welfare of people with disability by 100%. And it is only with the work of organisations like the ones represented here today and who are not here today, but will indeed continue to do that work. I thought it fitting as I was introduced to the chorus of Lady Gaga that my final and parting words be a direct quote of one Lady Gaga. Delegates, it's been my privilege to captain the ship for the 2018 Doing Disability Differently conference. I will continue to do things differently. I will not apologise and I will not compromise on that because it's through those difficult conversations that we create the space for lasting, long-term social change. And as Lady Gaga says, delegates, whether life's disabilities left you outcast, bullied or teased, rejoice and love yourself today, because baby, you were born this way. Thank you very much. I'm Wayne Herbert, The Disabled Game.